Last month, Hulu dropped the third season of two of my favorite shows within a week of each other. The widely anticipated third season of The Bear and the more acutely anticipated third season of Shorzy. The Bear focuses on Chef Carmen Berzato. In the first two seasons, we saw Carmi take over the Chicago beef sandwich shop from his deceased brother in an attempt to reopen the beef as a high-end restaurant aptly named The Bear in hopes of achieving a Michelin star for culinary excellence. The Bear as a show is listed as a comedy and has won Emmys for Outstanding Comedy Series, Actor, Supporting Actor, Supporting Actress, Directing, and Writing in a Comedy Series. Not to say these awards aren't warranted. The Bear is an amazing show, but anyone who's watched it over the previous two seasons would be hard-pressed to call it a comedy. On the other hand, we have Shorzy. Shorzy is a spinoff from creator and star Jared Kiso. The character of Shorzy started as a running joke in Kiso's first show, Letterkenny, that finished its 12-season run last year. Shorzy serves as the main antagonist for the hockey players Riley and Jonesy. We only ever see Shorzy from the back, and he describes in graphic detail the myriad ways and situations that he's had sex with Riley and Jonesy's moms. Fuck you, Shorzy. Put a shirt on. Fuck you, Riley. Go scoop it off your mom's bedroom floor for me. She gives my nipples butterfly kisses. That's it. That's the whole character. When Kiso announced the spinoff show based on Shorzy, of all the side characters in Letterkenny, I had no idea what this show was going to be or what it even could be. I first found out about Jared Kiso and Letterkenny from an episode of Kevin Smith's Smodcast. After the first season aired in 2016, he said, go to YouTube and look up Letterkenny Cold Open. It's the funniest thing I've seen. That's advice I still give to people. Go do it now. When Shorzy debuted, I was shocked by what Kiso had done with the character. Shorzy had left Letterkenny and was playing for the Sudbury Blueberry Bulldogs in the Northern Ontario Senior Hockey Organization, or the No Show. It was a bad team. No characters from Letterkenny were there. It was shot differently. It was a completely different animal than Letterkenny. It was funny, yeah. Funny as hell. Snort when you laugh funny. And what's this I hear about you taking a dump in his girlfriend's lake? It was a lake. It wasn't her lake. But you can't own a lake. But it had heart. Not to besmirch Letterkenny, but Shorzy, following this recurring your mom joke of a character, built relationships, showed the trials and tribulations of its characters on a level that I was honestly not ready for and not expecting. So when I spent a week watching the third seasons of these two shows, I realized something. They're kind of the same show. And that's why I love them, because both of these shows are love stories. Not love stories between two people, but between one person and his job, his craft, what he feels like he was put on this planet to do. And that's riveting television. Just a heads up, spoilers ahead for The Bear and Shorzy. Okay, so both shows come to a place near to their respective creators. Christopher Storer, creator and director of The Bear, grew up in the Chicago suburb of Park Ridge, Illinois. His sister, Courtney, is the culinary supervisor on The Bear and a professional chef. Also, while in Park Ridge, Storer met Chris Zuccaro, the owner of Mr. Beef, the sandwich shop that serves as the model for the beef that Carmi takes over from his brother and later turns into the bear. Jared Kiso, creator and star of Shorzy, grew up in Ontario, and he played junior hockey in both the Western Ontario Hockey League and the Greater Ontario Junior Hockey League. Both of these guys know the subject of these shows inside and out. Storer started working in entertainment as a director of stand-up comedy specials for comics such as Bo Burnham, Hassan Minaj, and Dan Soder, whereas Kiso started as an actor after leaving his job at his family's sawmill in Ontario. Both creators went back to what they grew up around, what they know best, and it shows on the screen. That's why they can write these characters so well. It's because it's people they know and lives they've either lived or seen people close to them live. This plays into the love story between Carmen Cooking and Shorzy and Hockey. It's what they feel they were made to do. At the start of the third season, both of our protagonists are in a bad spot. Carm had a meltdown while locked in the walk-in and ends up pushing away his girlfriend, Claire, and his cousin, Richie. Two people that have been there supporting him all of season two. Shorzy and the Bulldogs end season two being the undefeated winners of the no-show. But when we jump into season three... Oh, why? We find out they ended up losing the championship to the Sioux Hunt off-screen, and now they're hurt. Everyone's hurt. But in both shows, there are bigger things on the horizon that need to be done. The Bulldogs have a tournament being played in their barn with teams from all over Canada coming, and since they're the hosting team, they're automatically in the tournament despite losing the no-show in the playoffs. Carm putting off apologizing to Claire is the same as Shorzy facing the fact that he's hurt. Growing up and admitting you're wrong sucks. It's painful. Both are trying to accomplish something that they've never done. They want to reach a new height in their career that they've never reached before. Carm wants a Michelin star for his food at his restaurant, and Shorzy wants to prove that his team is the best in Canada. Carm has ended up adopting some of the borderline psychotic tendencies of the chefs he's learned under to push his team in the kitchen, and Shorzy repeats, you go till you can't go no more. This is both of their constant drive until we finally reach the thing that's out of their control. Shit. 
Chef Sydney, why is Chef Carmen saying shit like that? For Carm, the restaurant gets reviewed. They had procedures for this. They had pictures of all the food critics that might come in to review the bear posted in the office. But when someone from the paper calls to let them know they need to schedule a time to take pictures, they know it's already happened. The critic has already eaten, and they have no idea at which table. It could have been flawless service, or it could have been the table that had to wait while their food was refired multiple times, or the table that fact neglected to even leave the food. Hi, welcome. Um, this is a broth from Chef Carmen's Mind, mirepoix and broth. I pour it in front of you. Enjoy. On the ice, Shorzy gets hit hard. Nat, the owner of the team, puts him on the bench. He's hurt. He has gone until he couldn't go no more. Two concussions, my guy. Shut the fuck up. There's another archetype in both shows that really shines in these third seasons. They have their benefactors. Carm has his uncle who's bankrolling him. I have a bill in my hands for $11,268 for butter. Buddy, what is it? The fucking rare Transylvanian five-titted goat? We cannot fucking keep this up. It's Orwellian. It's dystopian butter? And Shorzy has Nat. They're the owners. They're the money. But they know how talented and at the same time broken Carm and Shorzy are. They're special. They can do it. They scream at each other, but it's purely out of love. We find out that Unk is on the verge of being broke, and he still lets Carm keep thinking that there's a chance, so he keeps pushing. He stands up for Carm every last chance he possibly can. Nat fights tooth and nail to get Shorzy back on the ice for the final, but has him make the rough decision that it will be his last game. They're bending over backwards for people who are running the risk of blowing up their own lives pursuing their dreams. Car might crash and burn running the bear. The next injury Shore takes might not only end his career, but could alter the rest of his life. It could be seen as reckless, could be ignorant, but goddamn they believe in their boy. And that's beautiful. Both seasons end with a great cliffhangery moment. The Bulldogs won, yeah, but Shore is done playing. He has two offers. He can become a commentator or a coach. They want you to be an analyst? Yeah, they said they wanted a really good-looking guy. I don't know. Really? Yeah, I guess we're having a hard time finding really smart, good-looking guys. I don't know. For Carm, we get news that the review is out, but we don't know what it says. Motherfuck. These shows are such amazing windows into drive and the love story between people and their co-workers and people and their work. Like most love stories, the relationship can drive you to the point of literally breaking you. But you do it. You go till you can't go no more. You fire everything. Now. I can't speak highly enough of these two shows. On the podcast I host with my best friend Jake that comes out every Friday right here on this channel, so subscribe and listen to that. We recommend each other a piece of media each episode and then come back the next week to discuss how much that thing was up our individual alleys. That's why the show is called that. I've come to a realization while doing this show that watching someone do something they absolutely love is the most captivating thing in the world. It doesn't matter what it is. If you're into it, it's entrancing to watch. And that's what both of these shows are on two levels. Chris Storer and Jared Kiso are incredible creators. Both are making shows set where they grew up and both about a guy who knows what he's here for. And it's worth sitting down and binging hours of television to watch. Thanks for watching the video. Please like, subscribe, do all that YouTube algorithm stuff. Like I said, we have a podcast that comes out every Friday. It's called Up Your Alley with Jake and Taylor. So listen to that. And yeah, thanks y'all.